So my man Chaz, Chazzy Chaz, how you doing? Good, I'm doing great. Great to be here with you today, Victor. So where are you, where are you dialing in from? Kansas City, Missouri. The Super Bowl champions, this is the city. Also the barbecue capital of the world. <laughs> some may a, argue that some may argue that point <laughs> I, i'm aware uh i that's that seems to be a big thing i have a, a very good friend of mine who's also from kc and uh he always brings up the barbecue capital of the world and, and how everything else basically sucks so <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't go very that far proud. but it does have good barbecue <laughs> um well Chaz, if you can uh, I'd like for you to kind of quickly introduce yourself uh, and, and like say what you're doing, and then we'll jump in with some questions uh, that go directly to see how you can add value, because I'm a huge fan of what you're doing. Uh, you add constantly and consistently great value to the people who are willing to tune in and listen to you. And so it's a thrill to, for me to be having you here. I'm based in Barcelona with Barcelona Metropolitan, a magazine for the English speaking community of Barcelona. And, but we have people around the world who listen in. And we're always trying to add value to people physically here as well as online. So if you can, get, tell them who is Chaz Horn. Right. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be here. And we've been talking for, for quite some time. So it's great to have this time to have this conversation. And so me, Chaz. So I'm a, I'm a business owner, mastery of B2B sales. I started six years ago. And we can get into some more details when we start. And what I do is... There's a lot of people out there starting businesses and they have an expertise, but as long as they're talking with someone and they have a client, but the problem is they don't know where to identify, attract and onboard. And that's all about marketing and sales. So I fill that gap for them so they can predictably identify and attract new clients and then they can use their expertise to serve their clients. All right. And so, um, Say, so how did you get started? <laughs> Long time ago, there once was a, a 24 year old kid who was clueless and he was the worst in sales, <laughs> the absolute worst in sales, 119 out of 119 salespeople. I didn't have a single sale, Victor. And my boss pulled me aside, Ken Upton. My, he became, he went from boss to mentor that day. He pulled me aside. He said, Chaz, he said, you can be, those three words changed my life. Someone believing in me. I didn't believe I had potential. And so someone at that level, seeing something in me, changed my mindset. He said, you can be. Now he followed that with the top salesperson in, in the company. But <laughs> you got to follow the system. you got to follow the process. It's proven. And so going way back to when I was 24, I know this only seems like five years ago, right? <laughs> but way back to when I was 24, that was drilled into my head. I have potential and follow a system, follow the process. So fast forward 30 years, I've been in 11 different, vastly different industries. And I've been not in all of them, but most of them have been either the top in sales or near the top. But that was all about sales process and sales skills. And I do teach people how to sell, but it wasn't until like about eight years ago that I really started to grasp and understand marketing. Now, it, I did a lot of side hustles along the way. <laughs> One in particular, it, you know, I was just thinking, I need to start my own business. I didn't want to work for anyone else. <laughs> and this, this company approached me with a franchise and it was all about cleaning exhaust hoods in kitchens, in restaurants. And I thought, wow, this is a great business because if they don't have this done, the fire marshal will shut them down. Well, meeting a need in the marketplace shouldn't be now for some people, but not for me, it needs to be deeper than this, but meeting a need in the marketplace just to have a business knowing that all the challenges and all the stress you go through as an entrepreneur and a business owner didn't speak to my why. And a year later, I was on top of this roof, four stories up in Kansas City, this Adams Mark Hotel. It was at three in the morning and it was 
30 degrees. I was spraying this high pressure washer and I was on this metal roof. The, the, the liquid was freezing on the roof and I slipped and almost fell off the roof. And so at that point in time, I'm like, I do not want to do this anymore. And so my mindset shift and I was, I was afraid of stepping out of my comfort zone. And so I continued to work for other people. I continued to sell. I continued to do well in sales. And I lived what I call the successful career line. There's a lot of people out there that do this. They make just enough money to stay in their comfort zone. And then they live a life Sunday evening going into the next day thinking, oh, man, I got to go to that job I hate. And I appreciate being employed and having the job, but there is so much more to life. I knew that. And it wasn't until 2016, 2015, when I was talking about marketing here, I started to grasp marketing. I started, I understood I had a skill set helping people sell. And I started developing marketing which is the core, which, which really opened up my, my eyes to the opportunity because marketing was that key component that I missed in my years in sales because it was always about the sales process and the sales skill set, the technique, the tactic, you know, taking them into the conversation, asking those questions and closing the sale. But when I started understanding marketing, which is all about building confidence in your prospect's mind about you, your solution, being able to solve their problem, it changed the dynamic of all my conversations. I started attracting people to me who knew me, like, liked me, trust me. I mean, the ones that wanted to work with me. Marketing also repels the wrong people. <laughs> okay. Right. So I started attracting people to me and it changed the dynamic of the conversation, Victor. People were, I was, I was like, wow, they want to work with me. This is different than just sales without marketing. And so my business started in 2016. Yes, I taught sales, sales process, sales skills, but I was able to provide the marketing so that my clients had a way to identify and attract clients to them and not just rely on sales skills and sales process. And so that's the journey through my sales, understanding marketing, having a failure in business, doing something that I hated, chemical covered in grease, yeah, that morning at three in the morning definitely taught me what I did not want to do. But that's okay. If you execute on your thought and idea, you'll learn, hey, I can learn from my failure or learn, hey, I want to do something else. But that's how right. I got started. And so what is TTABS and how did you bring sales and marketing together? Yeah, and as we look back here, so it used to be TAB, TAP or technique, attitude, behavior. So I've added the other T in the S. So let me explain. So T is tactic. That's what you do. Okay. The second T is technique. That's how you do what you do. Very important distinction here. I was, I was just talking in my Q&A session, my live audio event today on LinkedIn. A guy asked me the same question. So what do you mean technique? Well, if I'm talking with someone on the phone and we're ending a conversation, they're a prospect and they say the typical, oh, Chaz, that sounds great. I'm really interested. Follow up with me in two weeks. Okay. And if you listen to that and follow up in two weeks, you're going to waste a lot of your time and you're going to waste a lot of their time. So think about this and then this will go into the technique. So here's your prospect. Here you are. Okay. Your equals but you are the authority and it's your job to guide and direct the sales process and one or it will end up what I call the mess principle, end up a mess for you and for them. If people say follow up in two weeks and you follow up and follow up, you're going to waste your time. You're going to waste their time. So having a proven process, system and process, like I was referring to Ken Upton earlier, is you need to take them through the process. You need to be the authority guiding and directing the conversation and a technique is one way to do that. So if someone says, Jazz, follow up in two weeks, or any anybody in your audience, follow up with me. Victor, follow up with me. Say this, and how you say it is important, the technique. Victor, 
I'd be happy to talk with you in two weeks. Is there something specific that you'd like to think about um, before I follow up? Or is there anything that you have questions about or anything that gives you pause or hesitation? Oh, and, you know, they respond, well, you talk to my partner, I need to do X, Y, and Z. How long do you need to do that? Oh, maybe three days. Would it be okay with you? Tone is a big part of, of technique. My, my old sales coach, Dick Brooks, said this, the three most important words in sales are nurture, nurture, and nurture. And your tone can repel or attract. So if I said, Victor, would it be okay with you to save both of us time if we schedule a meeting in four days, would that give you enough time to talk with your partner? And if we could regroup, I can talk with you and your partner. We can dive into the questions, the problems you have, and we won't have to go back and forth. Would that be okay with you? So that would be a technique. And if they're interested, they'll schedule the meeting. If they're not interested, then they're probably, they're probably not interested. So that would be a, a, a technique to use with tone in framing it in a, in a way that makes sense to them. You know, save us both time, okay? Would it be okay to save us both time from going back and forth? A is attitude. If we don't have the right perspective, the right mindset, then you're not gonna act on your thoughts and ideas and you're gonna fail before you even get started. That's the hub. If you imagine T, T and B, S, um, that would be the spokes. The hub, if this would be a wheel, that would be the spokes. The hub would be attitude. Everything revolves around attitude and having the right perspective, the right mindset, the right understanding and confidence in you and your product is essential in order for you to be successful. B is the behaviors. So B and tactic are closely related because the tactic is what you do. The behavior is how many of the tactic do you do to reach a certain goal? Like I'm going to make this many calls to get this result. So it's the behavior of those activities you do to move the needle. That's B. And then S, this is the thing that was absent for most of my sales career. Strategy. Sun Tzu said this. He said tactics. He's the author of Art of War, Military Genius from way back when. He sure. said tactics without strategy is a noise before defeat. He also said this. Strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. You need both. So strategy, think marketing, as I alluded to earlier, it's about building confidence. You got to understand your core audience. Very, very important. And this is why, this is where I start with my clients, understanding their, their audience, their needs, their wants. And so you can craft a marketing strategy that speaks directly to them. And so they know you, like you, trust you, repel the people that don't like you. That's part of marketing too. And then they have confidence in you and your solution being able to solve your problem. So that's kind of in a nutshell tabs. And if you're not predictably identifying, attracting clients to you, I guarantee you it's going to be one or more of these five areas that are out of place. They need to be in alignment and they need to work congruently with one another. Okay. Well, nice. That's nice. Uh, uh, well articulated, concise, and yet thorough response. So thank you for that. Um, You're welcome. Now, we all know that being an entrepreneur sounds sexy. It's fun. <laughs> Everybody makes lots of money real fast, and there's always these hockey stick sales charts. And that's we all know that's not true. Being an entrepreneur is most of the time, it really sucks. You know, it's, sometimes you're a small company. Uh, even if they weren't friends when they started, they become close friends because it's a small company. And you rely on each other. And these people depend on you to, to make payroll. Um, it, and it's often a very lonely road late at night trying to figure out how to make sure that everybody that you're is on your team stays happy, motivated, um, and well paid. Um, so how do you stay healthy as an entrepreneur? Because this is a tough thing to do. And you're always out there. You're putting yourself out there. You're in a good mood. I see you dancing. I think <laughs> I got to talk to Chad. Tell us how you do this. Yeah. Well, I like everyone. There's a statistic out there by Kajabi. Kajabi is a where a lot of people, I use Kajabi for a training platform for their clients. 
and they, they did a survey about entrepreneurs that struggle with imposter syndrome. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. And it was like 86%. And so I, I faced that on a consistent regular basis. And as I watch podcasts, I read books from these billionaires, they all struggle with it. And so I love this question, Victor. So you have, you have your health, and you have your physical health and emotional health, they're tied together. And so what do you do? Because entrepreneurs have more stress than anyone else. And so how do you do, how do you deal with the stress? Well, I learned an important lesson when I got really, really sick in 2020. I was, I was working, 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 working. This is my dream. And I was like doing everything. And I was working lots of hours. And then I got sick. And I literally had to sleep 13 hours a day. And I learned around this time biohacks. And if you think biohack, what's a biohack, Chaz? It, if you think just little things that you could do to improve your health, like diaphragmatic breathing, Wim Hof breathing, ice baths, sauna, um, intermittent fasting. So I was, I was going through this uh, sickness that lasted about, Three months, I mean, where I was sleeping 13 hours, and I'm just like, okay, God, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Here's my business. I don't know. I would wake up. First thing I would go to, this may sound unusual, I would go to gratitude, and that took my mind off how I felt and focused on all I had. And it was at this point in time, and this is so important for any entrepreneur out there, if you grasp gratitude, it will change your life. I had a head knowledge of gratitude, but when, it, this, when I was sick, it went from head knowledge to heart knowledge. I started, as I was laying there in bed, it's like, I can see, I can hear, I can taste, I can feel. I have all my five senses. And it was at that time, as I was in bed, just thinking, wow, look at all that I have. And you know, I have a faith and I'm like, okay, God, I don't know what, what this is going to happen here, but I'm just going to trust you. And I did things proactively like the Wim Hof breathing. They got me strength to get out of bed. I took an ice bath. <laughs> they took, they gave me the energy to work to four to five hours. And then I would, you know, do the whole thing over again, you know, for a long, for, for many, many months. So what I do now is I take breaks throughout my day. I have my my CFO in the other room, my chief fun officer, also uh, Louie, my dog. (laughs) She'll come in and she'll break up my day and, hey, let's go out and play. And so I take breaks throughout the day, about five, five to 10 minute breaks. And by the way, it will increase your productivity if you take breaks during the day, scientifically proven. So I take breaks. I make sure I get to sleep at a, at a good time every night. And then I plan out my day with those breaks and I exercise. I exercise first thing in the morning. I do my biohacks. I do my Wim Hof breathing, diaphragmatic breathing. This is breathing into your belly, meditation. And with that, it helps me be able to focus on gratitude and it helps improve my health with all these little health hacks. So that's what I do. And if it wasn't for those health hacks and with a better understanding of my schedule and in and, and, and grasping the things that are important in my life and not taking breaks and, and, and doing things outside of work, like going out at the sunset, you know, all these different things have helped me get perspective on what's important. And it's given me a lot of energy. You mentioned my energy. It's going through that time. It, just get, I have a lot of joy and energy in my life because of all those things that I went through and when I learned through the process. Does that make sense? No, absolutely. I love your trademark laugh too. It's, <laughs> it's unmistakable. Um, and so, can I um, can I say something about that real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I going through a time in my life where I went through some difficulties. This was a different time. We all have challenges and stuff. I, I start. I got that laugh, and my kids used to make fun of me. Like if we were in public, they said, dad, that's weird. And I'm like, man, I don't want to be weird. But then I started realizing hey, that's part of who I am. And so now I just, I just let it rip. Yeah, no, it's a, 
it's certainly I can I can hear that anywhere in the world, and I go, "That's Chaz." So you know, <laughs> I was on. I can be on LinkedIn anywhere, and I, or because uh, I really love to listen to to your um, your strategy sessions on your audio event and and, and LinkedIn Thank uh, you. live things. Um, but sometimes uh, when I'm when when I want just a little pep, I can see you doing lambada or not lambada, I salsa dancing. And uh, and I and I hear your laugh, and I'm like, oh man, it just puts you in the right mood. So thank you for uh, for being yourself and, and your authenticity. I appreciate um, you. Thank you for saying that. And so, how do you keep perspective and your mindset in the right place so that you can follow through in doing your exercises and staying? Because I think we all know, you know, the funny thing is, Chaz, so many of us know exactly what we need to do, and then we don't follow through on, on a consistent basis that makes us be successful, and then perhaps causes some self-sabotage. How do you do that? Yeah, that's such a great question. Wow. And this is something I continually face. I have a process in place now to, to do this. So let's just think about a challenge. We all face challenges. Entrepreneurs face more challenges. They have more stress than anyone else. So when you face the challenge, it can be an anchor that keeps you stuck in mediocrity, or it could be a springboard that takes you into your potential. What's the difference is, is your perspective. And here's a process I go through. We talked about imposter syndrome or I talked about imposter syndrome just earlier. And when we face challenges or say we have doubt or different things we're going through, a lot of times we'll have the internal dialogue in our mind that will say, you know, you're an imposter. You can't do this. Who do you think you are? You know, in 80% of our, I saw a statistic the other day, 80% of our thoughts are negative, up to 80% of our thoughts are negative each and every day. So if you're having all these negative thoughts, how can you proactively step out of your comfort zone and do those things that you need to do, act on your thoughts and ideas? And so this is one of the things I, I do. It's called the 3D process, three-dimensional process is, you know, a lot of people talk about, have you ever heard people say, change your story, change your life. You know, Tony Robbins says that it's like, okay, that's great. Change your, what does that mean exactly? <laughs> and so here's a process to change your story, change your life. And it's the questions we ask ourselves that determine the direction of our life. So when we face a challenge, there's three things we go through. Then I'll jump into the 3d process. It's we face a challenge. It's like, okay, what type of situation is this? That's one. Two, who am I, my identity? And number three is, what does a person like me do in a situation like this? And a lot of times we'll go, it's like, well, I'm not, not, not really anybody special. And what does a person like me do like this? Uh, nothing. Or I creep back and grab a donut. <laughs> okay. It's our subconscious, our inner dialogue that determines our actions. So moving to the 3D process, it's the first dimension is what's the story I'm telling myself. So let's say I'm, I'm going through a feeling. It's like, man, I feel down all of a sudden. Why is that? Oh, because this incident happened and now I have doubt. And so I'm identifying it. And if it's something bad, I get those emotions out. Ah, you know, you need to scream, cry, yell, cut, whatever you do, get it out of your system, but don't dwell on it. So that's the first dimension. Identify the story you're telling yourself, getting the emotion out, not dwelling on it. Second dimension, what are the facts without emotion? This is 90% of the battle because it's the emotions that we struggle with. And so if we look at the facts, we just like, oh, well, I'm going through this situation. This guy said something and it made me think negatively of myself. I don't even know this guy, okay? He's not a client, he's not a prospect, okay? Those are the facts. I've served hundreds of clients. And so those are the facts. So I'm getting some understanding and working through the process in my mind. And then the third dimension is what if the opposite story is true? This guy doesn't like me because maybe I'm revealing in him something that he doesn't have. And I'm going in the right direction. I've served hundreds of clients. And maybe this is just validation with this guy saying negative things about me that I'm moving in the right direction. So that 3D process helps me emotionally and mentally. And we all know scientifically that 
if we don't control our stress, our stress will lead to sickness and, you know, emotional wellness will be gone. Our mental health will be gone. It will lead to physical ailments. So that's the, one of the things I do to help with my mindset and help with my perspective. Okay. Well, see, I see you, you, you look slim and trim. Like you're, you're, you get your exercise normally and I see you dancing and you, you, what do you do on a regular basis when you say you, 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 uh, you maintain your exercise and your commitment to your temple, if you will, do you, yes. are you a regular jogger or what do you do? So yes, great question. Thank you for the follow-up. Um, I do intermittent fasting five to seven days a week. Intermittent really? fasting, I didn't even know what it was. You know when I had to sleep all the, that those, that time? Intermittent fasting starts at 16 hours. That's where it starts. And so one of the positives that came out of that situation is I didn't eat for a long time. And so I would almost be at the 16 hours. Intermittent fasting is not just about losing weight. They, they, there's a, a direct link to they have a scientific study where it prevents you from dementia um, because of the cleansing of your cells. This is the Chaz's non-scientific description. So I do the intermittent fasting, okay? And my body cleanses itself. I, I exercise, I, I do those biohacks that I was talking about. I First thing in the morning after my biohacks, I, I go out for a walk, run with my dog every morning. And usually it's only for like 10 to 15 minutes. Some days it's longer. Some days it's a little bit shorter. Then I have food. I eat healthy food. Typically I eat cleaner food, you know, organic. I eat five sources of greens every day, raw vegetables, organic. I'm eating, you know, grass-fed beef. Um, I'm eating like eggs and, and avocado. I don't eat a lot of junk food, okay? I don't drink so soda, pop, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I also actually, I do another walk in the afternoon with my CFO, my chief fund officer, my dog. And then I, I work out again, I'll do something else in the afternoon. Um, and these are like 10, 20 minutes. And then I'll do a weight workout. Sometimes I have a gym here at home, I'll work out here or I'll go to the gym. And so I'm working out with anaerobic type workouts and aerobic workouts. And I do that typically six to seven days a week. Wow. Okay. Well, now I understand that. So you've mentioned your CFO a couple of times now. <laughs> Can you expand a little bit more on who your CFO is and describe your CFO more? Yeah. Hey, Louie. I'll see if she comes in here. So <laughs> for sure. My CFO is an Australian shepherd and uh, she may be outside right now. She has a little gate that she can go in and out on. Um, and my kids are grown. My daughter's 22. She works for me. Um, and so I have a dog and your dogs kind of become your kids when your kids are out of the house. And so she's my constant companion. You see, Victor, if I do videos, like if I'm in the field and talking, she's usually walking around. And so she pretty much goes everywhere where I go, with some exceptions. So, but yeah, with her barking at me before I was sick, sometimes it would be an irritation. But afterwards, that's where she went from an irritating dog. I still enjoy my dog, but breaking up my day to my chief fun officer because she helps inject fun into my life because she comes, breaks up my day, we go out and play. And it's it's really added a lot of joy to my life as opposed to just hunching over, not breathing, which will lower your immune system. And so yeah, that's my, my chief fun officer, my CFO. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, the, one of the things that uh, I wanted to help you get some visibility here in Barcelona and in Europe because your chat GPT stuff is also, you know, it's fascinating and a lot of people want to take advantage of it, but they don't know how to, uh, in the work that you do, can you explain, uh, the, the stuff that you're talking about, uh, with chat GPT and how people can avail themselves of it, uh, on LinkedIn to increase lead generation and, or just conversion. Sure. Yeah. Chat GPT is, it's an amazing resource. If you know what questions to ask the, 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 the official title is prompt engineer. What's a prompt engineer? It's someone who asks ChatGPT or AI questions. 
And so it's the quality of the question that, that determines the output. And so here's some of the things that, that I have done. So with my content, content is a form of marketing that if it's entertaining, inspirational, and educational, you'll start to speak to your target audience. And content doesn't always have to be about sales, marketing, solving the problem, all this. It also needs to be fun and entertaining. So with ChatGPT, I'm, I have a, a video that I'm going to put together about me, a package of bologna, and trying to break the world record. This is back in the fifth grade. <laughs> and so it's, it's going to be a fun, entertaining story. And pe when you break things up with your content, people like that and they enjoy it as opposed to just trying to sell them something and posting about, hey, I can help you. Reach out to me. So what I did in ChatGPT is I put in, I pulled it up and it's openai.co, uh, I believe, to get ChatGPT. And I said, I'm looking to put a, some fun content that will be entertaining with a sense of humor, but impactful. And I'm going to talk about when I was in the fifth grade trying to break the tree sitting record of seven days back. Now it's nine days. Okay. Why I tried to do this, I was I was in the fifth grade, okay? <laughs> I just wanted to break a world record. And so during the thing, I didn't really understand all the important things like maybe I needed water and not just baloney. How about bathroom breaks? And oh, maybe I should have had someone there from Guinness Book of World Records to validate that I actually broke the record. And so I put all this information into chat GPT and I say, spell this out with bullet points so I can put together a video about my story and connect with my audience. You know, five seconds later, it's given me a whole, it's taken my messy thoughts and it's organized them in a way that's like, Oh, okay, that's good. And then if it's, if it needs, if it's too long, I could say, make it shorter. Or if it's not good enough, you can do better. Or speak in the tone of, like, say, Tom Bilyeu, who's the founder of Quest Nutrition, and then I will speak in that, okay, in that tone. Another way with <laughs> ChatGPT is, um, let's say, direct messages. A lot of people, I mean, direct messages is a definite skill set. The marketing should bring people to your profile. We're talking about LinkedIn here. So leverage with your marketing, drives people to your profile, your position, and it's set up correctly as a landing page. Um, and it speaks to their need and problem. Leverage positioning will lead to conversion. But sometimes people get to your profile and that's it. On LinkedIn, the great thing is people, you can see when people visit your profile. And so how do you engage with this person? Okay, I can connect. Well, I usually will say this is like chat or Chaz GBT. I usually will connect with someone and say, thanks for visiting my profile. Um, many people visit my profile because of my content. What brought you my way? Then you can identify the problem like that, or you can identify why they got there, not the problem. And you can do a, a, a conversation. But sometimes those conversations stall or they don't get to the next step. And so I can copy and paste their about section or their um, experience section. LinkedIn gives you all this information about people's background so you understand their motivators, their behaviors, because you got to reach people based on what's important to them, not you. That's why connecting and pitching repels people because people don't want to be sold. But if you set up a, an environment where it's safe for them to communicate, they will buy from you. So let's imagine I took your information, Victor, and I copy and pasted it into, I would, I would frame a question first. The following information is the experience of Victor, who's on LinkedIn. I wanna come up with an assumptive statement about his experience and an open-ended question, and maybe mention something about the uh, the economy, the economic downturn in 2008 about what he was doing then. And so I, I, I put 
my question in, I put a colon, and then I copy and paste your experience into chat GPT, and then it will come up. And it will go to it will it will come up with an assumptive statement and an open-ended question about where you were and how did you overcome 2008? I see you were in this particular business. Now, why do I say 2008? Because no one goes back to 2008. <laughs> so you're going to differentiate yourself and you get people talking about their problems. And so that's, those are two examples with chat GPT. It's endless, the possibilities with the questions you ask, ask it, you can get the results, the quality of the questions determine the output from chat GPT. Those are a couple of examples. Okay. Well, one of the things that I've also, uh, I want to be sensitive to your time here, Chaz. We've been on for 35 minutes, but I could go on for hours with you. Um, one of the things that I've it. seen is that uh, LinkedIn is very powerful. Do you do uh, other, uh, do you help people with their marketing and conversions on other social media? So typically what I'm using now is I use two platforms, YouTube and, and LinkedIn. And the reason I do that is LinkedIn, when you have a post there, the algorithm, I mean, it's gone. Let me just explain. The algorithm is whatever social media platform has, they'll on LinkedIn, it will push out your content to someone for a very short period of time. It, basically, it's it, the algorithm is dead within a couple of days. Now, there's some exceptions to that. Now, YouTube, on the other hand, now it does have a short, like the shorts, the short videos, 60 seconds or less. That has a short or algorithm like LinkedIn, but the long form content on, on YouTube is evergreen. I have a, I have a, a post from 2015 that still gets five to 7,000 views a month. And so you have the short algorithm and you have the long algorithm and within LinkedIn, you have 80% of people make decisions on LinkedIn. B2B, I should say, B2B uh, businesses make decisions on LinkedIn more than any other social media platform. But when you have YouTube there and you have the algorithm that's evergreen and you have content, I get people, more people going to my LinkedIn profile because of my YouTube channel with my long form content where I use my short form content to get people to my long form content. And then they go to my LinkedIn profile and then I schedule a meeting. And so YouTube and LinkedIn, those are the two platforms that I think are the best if you're in B2B sales and B2C sales as well. Well, fantastic. You know, I'm still trying to, my, my daughter graduated the university. My daughter's probably about the same age as yours. And she started with me here and she has, uh, awesome. she told me she wanted to become an influencer. And within, I don't know, six months, to eight months, she had a million followers. And then another wow. couple of months, she had 2 million followers. And, wow. But she's, you know, this is TikTok, maybe 250,000 uh, on Instagram. And I'm, I was like, I wish I would be more effective at, you know, taking uh, full advantage of those social media. But I've been pretty dedicated to LinkedIn. Definitely see the opportunity, but, you know, just with such few hours in the day, you need to have a, a technique, a tactic, a strategy, behaviors. I got a pretty good attitude, but I, I can see where TTA BS here is uh, is something that people should avail themselves of as well. Yeah, shoot, you you should pay her and she could consult with you. I mean, <laughs> you know the, the the thing is, and here's something really interesting, Victor. So the the people like Generation Z, like my daughter's 23, your daughter's around the same age is they just understand social media and they understand naturally documenting their journey. I was talking to a guy who just started his business. He didn't have any money, but I gave him a tip. I said, just document your journey. This guy's name is John and you'll connect with your target audience. And so he posted about his first payment into his business, $164. Okay. On LinkedIn. And you think, Oh, and I asked my clients, would you be ashamed to post this as um, something that you just earned in your business? And every one of my clients put their hand up. I said, this is keeping you from growing your business and keeping you from connecting with your target audience. This guy posted this. He had like, I don't know, 111 followers on LinkedIn. 
After that, he had 1,500 followers and 140,000 people engaged on that post because he's documenting his journey. He's being authentic and transparent. He's not talking about authenticity or transparency. He's living it out. And when you are authentic and you're being your true self, you being you, I tell my clients all the time, you'll attract the right people and repel the wrong people. So your daughter is tying into that. I'm sure she's like documenting her life and she's connecting with her target audience. So kudos to her. Wow. Way to rock. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, I, I need to learn from my, my, my daughter. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Have you ever, do you ever target people out here in Europe with your business? I, I used to be exclusively United States, but then when you have, when you're posting content, you start reaching people. And so I have clients all over the world, the UK, Israel, I mean, you're, I mean, all over the world, I have, have clients. And so, yes, I do work with, with people in, uh, in Europe as well. Um, it, it just depends if they're the right fit for me and I'm the right fit for them. Okay. Well, I, I've definitely seen people from Africa and Asia on your, um, on your strategy sessions. What I, I didn't know whether or not you purposefully uh, went after that market or whether you're more centered or, or exclusive to the United States, but uh, you know, you take on opportunistically people who come to you. Yeah. It's just, if someone had, if, if you're a business owner and you have a need, you, you have, this is the key because there's companies out there. There's people out there that specialize in helping people create their offer. Okay. Or maybe they have some experience. Everyone's, you know, starting a business these days and a lot of people don't have experience and they're trying to help someone craft that. Those aren't people that I can help. I help people that they have experience and they have an offer that they believe in. Maybe it needs to be tweaked a little bit and I can help with that, but they're just, they have that gap where, Hey, here I am. And they think, okay, I got my LLC or my S corp. You know, I created my business. I did something, but where are all the clients? They don't understand marketing. They don't understand sales. And so I come in and fill the gap and give them a proven sales process and marketing strategy so that they'll have that in place. They'll work it if it's just like a solopreneur. And then they can get to the place where I want to hire a salesperson and I'll plug them into this proven system and process and this marketing strategy so that I can focus on other areas of the business. Because a lot of people I talk to, they don't want to continue being this, doing the sales and doing the marketing. They want to be delivering their offer and their solution and work in other areas of the business. And you can't scale your business if you're doing all things. <laughs> so I yeah. help generate a proven process and system that they know and understand, then they can hire someone to that system in process, and then they can lead them and manage them through the process. Okay. Well, I, I gotta, I gotta let you go because it's now, uh, I don't know what time it is there. And I know you're always really busy here. It's almost eight 45. Um, I appreciate it, and... Victor. This has been amazing. I appreciate the conversation. <laughs> no, it's always easy chatting with you, Chaz. You have this great energy. I think I'm a pretty positive person as well. I'm always looking to learn uh, when somebody who's nice and has, I, I, you know, offers value, uh, no bullshit. You go straight to the point and you do it with such great, I don't know, uh, authenticity is, is the word that comes to mind. Um, it's a joy that. to be with you. So I'll thank I'll, you. I will promote you here in, in uh, Europe. And if you're ever in town, uh, the tapas and the beers are on me or sangria or paella, whatever. I'll, you want. I'll definitely I'll definitely take you up on that. And yeah, reach out to me on LinkedIn, connect with me to say, hey, I saw you on Victor's podcast. Please do on the Metropolitan. That would be amazing. Thank you okay. so much, Victor. Well, thank you, Chaz. I'll talk to you soon. Um, and uh, last plug, when are your strategy sessions so people who are on here can can in? Yeah, so if anyone wants to have a 20-minute strategy session, I use tabs, T-T-A-B-S. We were just talking throughout this conversation. And so I'll use this to identify your problem quickly. And then if I believe I can help, I'll give you a path forward so you don't have to have that hope is a strategy because hope is not a strategy. So I can give you a path forward. If I can't help, I'll refer you to someone else. If I can't help, 
and you're interested, we'll schedule a more in-depth conversation for another day. So yeah, that's complimentary to anyone on this that sees it. Please reach out to me and say, I saw you offering a sales and marketing analysis. I want to take you up on it. Reach out to me and tell me you saw this on your conversation with Victor. Okay. All right, brother. Talk to you soon. All right, man. And say, hi to you. say hi to your CFO. Will do. She's around here somewhere. Take care, Victor. Thank you so much. Take care.